Welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurveda healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Cabral Concept. Great to have you here today on this Friday Review episode, where we are going to be tackling the top topics of the week, taking you through what's been going on in the private practice. Really excited to be able to finally be coming back to my hometown of Boston, Massachusetts that I'd like to share with you here today. And just really happy to be starting to move back into, I wouldn't say a normal routine by any stretch of the imagination, but just feeling a little bit more back at home. Still recording this podcast from much nicer weather, much more beautiful weather than where I'm from. You might hear some of the birds chirping in the background. And although I love being in all sorts of parts of the world, and really, I traveled to Australia, was planning on being there for a month. Many of you know that my trip was cut short because of the COVID-19 virus and the situation going on globally. We had to get back to the United States before they were canceling all sorts of flights. And believe it or not, we were on this international flight and there was like 12 people. I mean, it was unbelievable. But now we're traveling from the West Coast, traveling back to Boston, and just starting to maybe begin to settle in on what life will be like as we start to move out of this quarantine you know, phase, this lockdown phase of our life. And for me, it's going to be really about rebuilding. It's going to be kind of getting back out there and, and really starting to enjoy connections again, enjoy getting back and speaking with people and not having to literally cross six feet away from a person as they walk by me. It's the strangest thing. It's very odd. And I certainly do not want myself, my children, or our society, our culture to begin to feel that that's normal, that we have to avoid other people. So I want to share with you a few more statistics this week. I'm really disappointed in uh, still the media, how they are treating the situation, how they are talking about it. I just am. I can't express my displeasure enough with them. But again, I understand that they're a business and that's what sells. But for our podcast and many other podcasts, it's nice to know that we don't have to pander to advertisers or ratings or whatever it might be. If less people listen to the podcast, if less people decide to take this health journey along with us, that that's okay. Because what it's about is what it's always been about, and that's purity and that's spreading the truth about really what works and what we have going on. So I want to share with you, uh, again, what I've really been watching at in terms of the research, why I didn't put out a video this past week. But before that, I just want to always talk about what we have going on with the private practice and then just kind of get right into interviews I've been on, product review, research I have coming that I want to share with you today. So first up is a big announcement that we had over this past week, and that is something that I've wanted to do for a long time, and we simply needed the structure to be able to do it. So we are now giving away free lab selection calls. That means for $49, I know it's $49, yes, but that's because we need people to to be serious about it. That if you've ever had a question on what lab is right for you for these at-home labs to test gut health, hormones, digestion, thyroid, heavy metals, you name it, right? There's a lab out there. Well, we want people to feel comfortable with that decision. So simply put, you're going to get on a call with one of our health coaches, and we're then going to give you back that $49 to use for any lab test of your desire on at equilibriumnutrition.com. That's something I've wanted to do for a long time. Now, the spots are limited because we have a health coaching team that has a limited number of hours per week. But our goal is to be able to help people make the right decision for them, choose the right lab for them, and feel really confident in that decision. So I'm super excited about that. Essentially, a free lab selection call. That's what we're calling it. It's not a health consultation, but we're going to help you select the right lab based on your current symptoms and situation. So you can check that out at equilibriumnutrition.com. Just click on the new health coaching tab. You can actually review our 
private health coaching. Now you can actually become a private wellness client just as if you were in Boston, Massachusetts. We're going to use our brand new software to do video-based chat. All of your labs are inside of your private portal. I mean, it's absolutely amazing. I don't want to take up too much time today. I spoke about it earlier in the week on the outro to the podcast, but definitely check it out. I mean, it's, it's absolutely fantastic. It's how we've been helping people for many years. You know, I've been fortunate enough to oversee and be a part of myself uh, well over now a quarter of a million client appointments. And, uh, you know, I, again, what it's all about is sharing what you've learned that you know to be successful with other people. And that doesn't matter what area of your life. That's what it's all about. I mean, there's no greater pleasure in life, in my opinion, than helping another person out. And so whatever you do and whatever you're good at life or in life, teach that to others. I mean, it's just so much comes from it. It really does. And so anyway, that's what we're able to do right now. And you can check it out, the free lab selection calls, limited availability on those initially at least. And then there's the private health coaching as well. So definitely check that out. And then of course, this week we are ending in the next day or so, our stock up and save. This is your chance to really get our top products at 25% off when bought in bulk. We as a company, Equilibrium Nutrition, said at the beginning of this whole virus-based pandemic that we are not going to raise prices on most popular products, the immunity-based products. We are actually going to lower them when possible. And that's what we did. We said, these are products, and check out the research today that we know work, that have the research behind them, and that we hope to be able to keep people healthy and strong. So that is what we've done. Uh, This is a first-time, one-time offer, and you can check that out at equilibriumnutrition.com while supplies last, while this offer lasts, and that is the stock up and save. Check it out. There'll be a banner at equilibriumnutrition.com when you land on it, and we'll also try to link it up today. Podcast number is stephencabral.com forward slash 1547. All right. I was on an interview. It's the last interview that will be popping up for a while, and that's because um, I've had a lot of travel uh, getting back to the U.S., and I had to push off a few of my interviews that I was supposed to be on. But I, again, I, I am excited to say that they will be back in action coming soon. So coming soon, they will be back in action. I'll be on more and more interviews. But this one was with Natalia Benson. I believe I mentioned Natalia last week on the Friday Review. But it's official. Her podcast with me on it launched this past week. And I'm going to link that up for you. But If you don't know Natalia, she is a women's empowerment coach. She is a modern mystic and astrologer, and she helps essentially women create a greater, more fulfilling based life. So really fun to talk to. I mean, honestly, it was a great conversation. Really enjoyed Natalia's energy. We talked about Ayurveda. We talked about detox. We talked about the rain barrel effect. We talked a little bit about immunity and and virus-based protocols. So I think you're really going to enjoy that. And of course, I'm going to link that show up at stephencabral.com forward slash 1547 so you can check it out. But her podcast is called the Natalia Benson Podcast. All right. Next up, we have a product review before we get to, you know what, before the product review, I just want to talk a little bit about COVID-19 and the virus itself, just because I didn't do a video the previous week. And so I want to share with you, well, a couple of reasons why is that it's getting so political, it's unbelievable. I mean, and again, no one's really going to share this with you unless they're not bound by advertisers. But right now, what hospitals are doing is they're getting paid $15,000 to sometimes $30,000, depending on if they have to use ventilators or not in the hospitals. This is in the United States. So what hospitals are doing, because hospitals, by the way, are a business, they're taking the free money. So they're saying, sure, this person maybe wasn't tested, but we're going to classify them as a COVID-19 test. By the way, you can look this up. This is not you know, me just saying this, because why would I say it if it wasn't true? Like I have, no, I have nothing to gain by this at all. So what they're doing is they're classifying more cases as COVID-19 cases. Now, it doesn't matter whether this is good or bad. It just is. So what I'm trying to share with you is this. It's just getting very political. We're offering government subsidies to these hospitals, so we're classifying it differently. People are potentially dying from other complications that have nothing to do with COVID-19, and they're being listed with a higher mortality rate for COVID-19. I'll share with that in just a moment. 
Again, this is not to downplay the severity of the virus itself. There's no doubt about that. But what I'm saying is that now we're seeing politics enter hospitals and we're also seeing it enter drug trials. So, so many doctors, there's actually posters around New York. You can check this out. Just go to New York street posters on COVID-19. And that's because doctors apparently are being fined for using specific drugs, I'm not going to even name them right now, that they believe are being successful with some people with COVID-19. So what people have done, just literally citizens have done, which they should, is go to the street and they are taping on signposts what people should be doing. And they're talking about vitamin C dosages, they're talking about the pharmaceuticals, they're talking about vitamin D, and they're talking about zinc. Because this is the truth. We've been talking about this before COVID-19 happened. And I'm going to share with you more of that research. If you are not using something like the Daily Foundational Protocol Level 2, and you are not using something like our immunity protocol, which is the vitamin C, the vitamin D, and the zinc, I just can't recommend it enough. You don't have to use equilibrium nutrition, but you can trust equilibrium nutrition. And if you have a great functional medicine doctor or integrative health practitioner that's recommending another functional medicine-based brand, that's okay too. But the truth is that it's not just me. There are hundreds of practitioners around the world recommending these things because one, they've seen them work in clinical practice, and two, they know the research, and the research shows what it does for the immune system. So again, there are many people taking these products to boost their immune system. They get sick, and they recover in three to four days. They don't have to go to the hospital. They don't end up with these severe complications. So again, I'm not saying that this is the right choice for you or that it will work for you. But this is giving yourself the best chance possible. There's no doubt about that. I mean, there's just no doubt about it. I'll share more of the research in just a moment. But one thing I also want to share with you is this, is that they're saying that the number of people who could have been affected already with COVID-19 that showed little to no symptoms may be 70 times greater than the total number confirmed. So the total number confirmed is about 3 million. Okay, so it's about 3 million people, 3 million cases. So it could be, what, what, what is that? Well, it could be over 200 million. And when we look at that, we say, is that a bad thing or a good thing? You know, a lot of times we always like to judge, well, what does this mean? Is this good? Is this bad? I don't really know. And so what I want to tell you is this, is that the more people that have already been infected, the better. And I know that that sounds really strange, but what we want, again, a lot of people forget that a virus has to move its way through the population, or it has to die out quickly. And what we're seeing, at least with COVID-19, in the non-humid weather, because we believe that this virus, like many other viruses, is not going to survive in humid-based weather. Because what happens is, outside of the body, it will attach or be dropped down to the ground by the water in the air, the moisture in the air. So that's why typically during more humid weather, you'll see less of a rise in in viruses. But then we say, well, it could come back this fall. Well, yeah, sure, it very well may. It very well may. But if we have more people that have had this virus, they already have the antibodies, they will then have little to no symptoms when they get it again. And this is what happens with viruses. In the beginning, and I agree, you have to basically isolate because you have to let the hospitals catch up. That's why we did this. No other reason, by the way. That's the reason we had to do this. We have to let the hospitals catch up so that the people that are most immunocompromised, our elderly, our immunocompromised at any age, that they have access to hospitals. So that's why we had to slow the spread. But we can't, nor should we, lock ourselves in our house for the rest of our life. Okay? That's not going to help anything. That is not. Because as long as you have a handful of people that are actually positive for COVID-19 and they have symptoms, they're always going to spread it. It's always going to happen until it works its way through, our body builds up its innate immunity. And I know that that may sound strange, but that's what the human you know, race, our, our culture, everyone around the world has always done. We've always been exposed to viruses and our body builds up its innate immunity. And for those people that are not strong enough to survive that virus, well, now we have modern-based things that we can help with. We have ventilators, we have pharmaceuticals, we have the higher-dose vitamin C, we have all of these things, and we want to use those for those people. But there's no way around it, and I'm not trying to sound insensitive at all. But what I want people to know is that this is how viruses work. If anyone is telling you otherwise, they're not understanding that 
it will always be there if there's an active virus. Now, we can hope that the virus just dies out like it has for SARS and many other coronavirus viruses. That's something we can certainly hope for, and I hope for that as well. If not, I just want people to know they can boost their immunity. So what I'm trying to say is don't be as fearful. Stay vigilant, but don't be as fearful. When all of this shakes out, when all of this is said and done, we might be looking at a mortality rate that's exactly the same as the flu. Now, it could be worse. The symptoms are certainly more severe, but at the same time, there's complications from the flu. People die from pneumonia from the flu all the time. But again, it's the 70 plus age group that we want to keep the most protected, whether it's flu season, H1N1, influenza, or if it's COVID-19. And that's not going to change. That is going to be a viral-based thing that happens seasonally. So what do we need to do? Protect those most at risk. The rest of us build up our natural immunity. Build it up. And then if you start to feel severe symptoms, go to the hospital. I believe that's the most rational, insane thing to do. I know not everyone agrees with me, and that's okay, because you, you have to go by what you feel is best. And so if you don't agree with me, that's okay. It really is. I just want you to, to have a couple sides of the story, and that's at least my side, and hopefully that that's helpful. Okay, let's move on now. That was my rant for Friday. My Friday rant is now done. I do want to go over a product review. One of our integrative health practitioners asked the community, what do you think about yerba mate tea? So you're, I know this is a big transition, but I'm just shifting gears here, 180 degrees. All right, yerba mate tea. Let's talk about that. It has been used now for thousands of years as a tea that contains about 70 to 85 milligrams of caffeine. So about that of, let's say, like um, a weak cup of coffee or half a cup of coffee. And it contains about one to one and a half percent of caffeine compared to about three percent for coffee. You know, that's like the dry grounds from it. Uh, yerba mate coming from leaves because it's a tea and coffee coming from beans, which is ground. So the difference is, though, that yerba mate, like a green tea. So green tea is about half the caffeine of yerba mate. So if we look at, let's say, a, a small cup of coffee, let's say a Dunkin Donuts, about 140 milligrams. Yerba mate, about 85 milligrams, 70 to 85 milligrams. So we'll say about half. And then green tea, about half of that, about 40 milligrams. So what we're looking at is, is different degrees of caffeine. But when you look at caffeine from tea, whether it's green tea or yerba mate, you're actually looking at something called theobromine, sometimes referred to as theobromine. And what it is, it's a different form of caffeine that allows you to have the alertness, which has been well studied, right? So it gives you that little enhanced brain effect and alertness, but it doesn't give you typically as much of the anxiety, the heart palpit, like the racing heart, or the jitteriness. So if you're someone that likes the alertness from coffee, but you get a little anxious, you get a little jittery, you might try yerba mate. And it's, it's actually sometimes pronounced yerba mate, but it's Y-E-R-B-A-M-A-T-E. So yerba mate, it's been used for thousands of years, and it allows you to enhance mental focus. And that's been actually well studied. So there's been lots of studies on yerba mate as well as other teas with cholesterol, with blood pressure, with essentially any inflammatory-based condition. And it's actually got pretty favorable results, especially may provide some protection against heart disease. So I like to see that, especially with cholesterol. That goes for many different teas. It's not just yerba mate where it has been shown to lower bad or LDL cholesterol levels by around 10%. So it's pretty impressive, right? You start maybe having a little bit of oatmeal with high cholesterol. You have your tea with high cholesterol, and you're starting to lower those levels by 10, 20%, you know, through food-based products. And, you know, we use these as almost like a supplement. I mean, tea is a supplement. Let's look at that for what it is. But it's great. I mean, again, supplements can be fantastic, and they are fantastic. So there's also studies with people using your ground yerba mate in more of a capsule. It has to be a little bit of a higher dose. And they're taking that before their moderate intensity exercise. And they actually found that they burned 20 plus percent more body fat. Now that can go for the same studies that we use with our fatlosity, right? Our fatlosity helps people burn more body fat. 25 clinical studies around it. It works. Bottom line is it's based on science. It uses the same type of components as a yerba mate tea. Uh, we also have the Capsamax, which is a patented fat burner as well. So again, these things work. What I want to share with you is this. There is a few studies, albeit small, that yerba mate 
consumed daily or quite often, especially at higher dosages and very hot, may cause some upper respiratory cancers. Now, this remains to be really well documented. So when I tell people about yerba mate, it might be nice as a when needed supplement, a couple times a week maybe, but maybe not every day. That's how I would look at it. Again, this is my personal perspective. People have been drinking yerba mate for many thousands of years, not dealing with upper respiratory cancer. But some people may be more potentially affected by it. So it's one of those things where I would say is, I have seen no issue with it. And I've tried it many, many times myself. I just don't love tea. I wish I did. I just don't love the taste of tea. And it's just always been like that with me, that that tea taste is just not something I can really get into. I try, but again, the more herbal-based ones, like a hibiscus, that's a different story, but it's not really a tea, right? (laughs) Hibiscus is not coming from a tea leaf. It's coming from hibiscus. Well, that's that. So hopefully I could share that with you. I think there's a lot of benefit to it. And again, sometimes you don't have to do things every single day. You might use it two, three times a week, and I think that's a really smart way that you could use it. All right, let's move over to our research for the day. My research that I want to give you today goes back to that vitamin C that I was mentioning, boosting the immune system and actually being used right now with the viral-based pandemic. So I shared this with my entire team over at Equilibrium Nutrition and IHP. And uh, again, everyone gets excited because we're all passionate about the work that we're doing. And it's always nice to see that the work that you're doing is actually founded in science and being proven over and over and over. So that's what I shared with my team. And of course, I want to share that same thing with you. I'm going to link it up today. I mean, really simply put, this was in my natural health practitioner's newsletter. So I get a newsletter uh, every single month for... Well, it it could be for anybody practicing functional medicine or naturopathic medicine. But what it did was it looked at two studies. And these two studies were actually being used for people boosting the immune system. And so this was used in, uh, let's see, talking about Long Island, New York hospitals are using vitamin C for COVID-19. And why isn't getting more press? Well, it's not getting more pressed because it's inexpensive and it's not a drug and there's no patents that you can use on it, Right. So it's actually quoted right here. It helps a tremendous amount, but it's not highlighted because it's not a sexy drug. I mean, that's the bottom line. That's really what it's talking about. So I'm going to send you over the the actual research studies here, but it showed that vitamin C shortened the length of mechanical ventilation on average by 14%. I mean, that's that's pretty great, right? Especially for that 14% of the people. I mean, the 14%, I should say, on average for the length of ventilation. So pretty great. And then um, in five trials which included 471 patients requiring ventilation for over 10 hours, a dosage of one to six grams a day of vitamin C shortened ventilation time by on average 25%. I mean, that's enormous. If you look at average of 10 days on ventilation, that takes it down by two and a half days. I mean, that's really impressive. And that's not on a high dose vitamin C, meaning like one to six grams, anything under 10 grams a day is really not high dose vitamin C. Certainly it's high dose because you don't want to be taking that on a daily basis, but high dose vitamin C is to bowel tolerance. We're talking like 20 grams, 30 grams, 50 grams or more like they were using in China. So there's 12 studies. This one says 1,766 patients, vitamin C reduced the length of the ICU, right? So this is the critical care unit on average by 7.8%. And this is only one to three grams a day. These are not large amounts. So I just want to share with you, you'll never hear this in mainstream media, which is why we need to pass it on. Because simply put, it works. Mainstream media doesn't want to hear about anything working because they want to perpetuate the fear-based media going on right now. And also, this is inexpensive. There's no drug. And that's why one of those other drugs they're not promoting because it's inexpensive. It's not patented. It's already passed its patent. So uh, please do continue to look at both sides of the studies on this. In our last research study for the day, wanted to bring you this. Anybody dealing with skin issues, any family members, any loved ones dealing with psoriasis or other skin rash or other skin inflammation disorders, there was a great study. It was just published February uh, February 18th, 2020 out of the University of California, Davis Health. And what it showed was that those people eating the Western diet, the standard American diet, that took in a lot of saturated fat as well as a high processed carb diet, so a lot of sucrose in the diet or higher sugar in the diet, experienced more psoriasis. Now, they had to figure out why. I mean, you might say, okay, well, of course, yes, but of course, but there's also a lot of other people who are eating the same diet that don't have psoriasis. And what they found, though, 
was they actually used a drug. So the drug they used was called cholestyramine. And why I mention this is not because I think you should go out and use this drug. I certainly do not. I actually recommend changing nutrition, right? Changing your nutrition to a more healthy, lower glycemic, Mediterranean-style diet with more monounsaturated fats than higher saturated fats. There's no doubt about it. I mean, that's you can make cases for every different diet. But what we're finding is that there's a huge issue with the types of, let's say, oxidized fats that people are eating and also higher processed carbs. But here's the thing. This study also showed that it's an issue when both of those are combined. And I've maintained this for many, many years. People ask me, what's worse, sugar or like oxidized fats? And I said, both together, like both together. And if I had to pick one, it would be oxidized fats because the body at least knows what to do with glucose. Sure, eventually it could cause type 2 diabetes if you really take in enough of just pure sugar and all of those things that you shouldn't be taking in. It can lead to fatty liver. It can lead to high cholesterol, etc. But oxidized fats, I mean, absolutely, they damage the liver, they damage the cell membranes, they create rapid aging, etc. But the thing is, combining both of these together is a recipe for disaster. And they actually looked at three different diets. So they looked at kind of their control, which is going to be their, their lower inflammatory, a higher fat diet, and then the standard American diet, the higher fat and higher carbs, processed carbs altogether. We're not talking about fruit, we're not talking about vegetables, we're talking about, you know, processed carbs bread, pastas, etc. So here's the thing. If you go high fat and high carb, it's going to lead to more weight gain. It's going to lead to more issues with the gut. It's a disaster for the body. It really is. And that's why you see people, again, in the short term, getting benefits from a lower carb, higher fat diet. There's no doubt about it. I've never denied that. I really haven't. Like I just want people to know that. The problem is you don't want to live on that for life. What you want to do is you want to get back to a nature-based diet, a healthy-based diet. How can we get more omega-3s? How can we get more plant-based foods? How can we get in healthy proteins and a moderate amount of fat? Not high fat, but a moderate amount of fat into the diet. That's going to be great for the brain, for cell membranes. Again, I always hear the rebuttal, your brain is 90% fat. Like, yes, it is. It's made predominantly more of fat. But here's the thing. That doesn't mean it runs off of fat. (laughs) Like if you look at that, people say, well, it can work on ketones. It can, but believe it or not, the neurons in the brain and the neurological aspects to it runs off of glucose. Now, it doesn't mean that you should eat a high glucose diet, but I also want to let people know that's the predominant fuel source. That's when your brain's going to work best. It means that you need carbs. It doesn't mean that you need too many or too little. So I just want to go back to that. I'm going to link up the study. And I just want people to know who have psoriasis, one thing that we do that just works really well is that we're using, well, first of all, we're running the organic acids. So we're running that candida metabolic and vitamins test, uh, also called the organic acids test. We're running a bacteria and parasite stool test, fruit sensitivity test. So no doubt about it. We're starting there. We're looking at that. We're looking at gut health. We're looking at intestinal permeability. We're looking at uh, stress in the body. We fix those things, but we also put them on more of a plant-based diet. We use zinc. We use magnesium. We use fluorofilm as a proteolytic-based enzyme away from food. We use digestive enzymes, multiple, like two, three with each meal. And we get great results. We really do. And that's why I want to share that with people because you know why? We're not treating the psoriasis. We're not treating the disease. What we're doing is we're working on the underlying root causal levels. And this study begins to show people, well, a lot of this has to do with the health of your bile acids that are being secreted based on the foods that you're eating. So again, there's always an answer. There is always an answer to what ails you. You can find it. I'm telling you right now, it's out there. Don't give up. Keep the hope alive. Hopefully today's podcast has been helpful. Thank you so much for tuning in. Take care. And as always, if this has been helpful, please do feel free to share this show with anyone you believe it could serve. Before you go, I wanted to share a personal story with you. The real reason I began to get well finally is because I figured out what was wrong with me. And that might seem pretty obvious, but I went from doctor to doctor for over two years before discovering at-home functional medicine lab testing. These are the labs that enabled me to finally figure out what was wrong with my hormones, blood sugar, electrolytes, and gut health. And once I knew what was wrong, I could then follow a proven plan in order to rebalance my body from the inside out. This is why I believe so strongly in functional medicine lab testing and why I've made it my mission to share these labs with the world. 
Now at Equa.life, you can order an at-home lab test or lab bundle for you and your family and be able to complete it within the week. Plus, the Equa Life difference is that you're not left to try to read and figure out these labs on your own. We explain what your lab numbers mean, what they mean in the much bigger picture, and then how to go about rebalancing your body in order to heal. To see our full selection of lab tests, or to set up a free lab selection call to find out what labs may be best for you, simply head on over to equa.life forward slash labs. And do remember, we ship these all over the world. To find out more and to set up your free lab selection call, simply head on over to equa.life forward slash labs. That's E-Q-U-I dot L-I-F-E forward slash labs.